Well, throughout the whole experience, both while Dave was sick and after he died, I just kept saying to myself, this pain must serve. And so I just kept looking for how, how was I here to serve? How did this experience serve some bigger purpose than just being honestly, completely heartbreaking and devastating? I mean, what you just said is so profound that I guess that's probably a good uh, segue into Bad Widow and Take Back Your Life After Loss. How does this pain serve? You've spent the years since um, serving people. Yes. I mean, you've lived out that mantra, if you will. So talk about how did, and you know, you can now tell listeners what Bad Widow means, but Talk about right. your mission. Go ahead, Gary. You're going to say something. Because that's the one thing I was saying in the beginning. That's yeah. the one thing that we've never done before. Neither one of us have any idea why you call yourself Bad <laughs> exactly. Widow. And normally on the pre-call that I do with a guest, I'll find something out that I'll know that Warwick won't know, so it comes alive to him. But I wanted it to come alive for both of us here. So wh where did the name Bad Widow come from? Yes, uh, Bad Widow came about Suddenly I was a widow and I had no idea what that was. I had never been that before. And I had a lot of trouble making decisions. I had a lot of trouble getting into action. My energy was really flagging, couldn't be counted on. I had the attention span of a fruit fly and I had gaps in my memory you could drive a truck through. And so all these things were going on that were very disorienting because they happened really suddenly in an instant. And what happened in the face of all that is that people who loved me came forward with their advice and their good ideas about what they sh thought I should need based on what they thought they would need in my situation. And usually they were wrong. And a good widow would just go along. Oh, thank you so much. But what I realized was that they really did want to support me. And they had no idea what they were doing. And there were consequences for that on my relationships with them. So if they did or said something wrong, it was not uncommon in the first year for me to burst into tears in the second year to go from zero to rage in five seconds. Both of these behaviors drive people away. So what I realized was that, first of all, there were no resources that I could find from where I found myself in what I call in the raw, from in that moment, because people don't like to talk about these experiences until they're through them and looking better again. <laughs> Boy, that is so true. <laughs> oh, that is profoundly true. I was in terrible shape, but now I'm all good, right? Yes. Everybody wants to give that speech, but <clears throat> you're in the raw. You know, you you have moments of just sobbing and rage, and that's that's not the all good part of the story. You know, it isn't. It isn't. And because it's never talked about, it's not understood. And so for the people at the effect of this, so if someone says something stupid and I lash out because I'm, I'm raw in this way, they might leave. They might have their feelings hurt. This doesn't help support the person who's grieving. So Bad Widow was okay, if there's nobody speaking from this place, if there's no other resource that I can find who's here, then I'm going to be that person. And I'm not going to just go along. If someone says something or does something that's not helpful, I'm actually going to give a better way. 